Hi there, um, I was going to have a go for trying to fix this uh, digital and analog uh, signal, TV signal analyzer. And if you've watched the last video, the main problem, as far as I could see, was the frequency uh, readout was indicating 960 megahertz all the time. So, uh, yeah, there's other faults. There's after switches are useless, um, and that's going to be hard to get to to um, even attempt to repair those. And the other thing is, um, it's really annoying. I was reading the uh, owner's manual for this, and it says in there it will demodulate an analog signal and you can use it like a TV basically if you stick it in monitor mode which it is at the moment but it will not demodulate digital signals so that makes it a, not such an attractive proposition because although you could see the strength of the signal you wouldn't be able to get a picture which is a bit of a shame but hmm. and the other problem it's got is uh, runs on a, when it's not plugged into the mains it runs on a 12 volt battery and I'll just uh, show you where that is and also I've got the uh, seem to have got the uh, frequency readout working at the moment anyway a 12 volt battery goes in this metal case at the back it's a lead acid so it's uh, lead acid 2.6 amp hour obviously they don't last long a couple of years if you're lucky so I'm not sure whether it's worth buying a new battery for it but anyway I've got the uh, frequency display hanging precariously there and it seems now to be working and I think it's just dodgy connections on the back of the thing it's got a plug in plug there which feeds signal up from the main board so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video unplug that give it a good clean with a, a switch cleaner plug it back in screw it back in the front panel and see if it still works okay um, giving it a good square which switch cleaner and it is really filthy inside the case so it's not surprising things are not working as they should so I'll turn it on and see what happens okay let's just have a look at the uh, frequency display and as you can see it is working there and if I tune it on UHF this is I can go all the way with the LBJ down to 437 Megahertz, that's the bottom of the UHF range. It's dusty and horrible, this display. The whole thing needs taking to pieces and cleaning thoroughly. Anyway, we go the other direction and it should go to about 800 or 900, I imagine. Alright, it's starting to drop out there. That'll be its upper limit, 863. Yeah, that's fine, that covers the whole UHF. In fact, that portion of the band isn't even used for TV now. There's cell phones on there. Um, our band in this country has now been restricted to, I think, about 700. That's as far as we go now in the UK on UHF TV. And we'll just have a look at VHF. 124. Right. This is VHF low band. So it should go down to about 40 odd megahertz. 43, that sounds good. And all the way with LBJ, as Dave likes to say. 169, 170. Yep, that's the low band. And high band is right up at 470. So it goes basically all the way from 45, 40 odd megahertz, completely all the way up to 900 and whatever it was, 860, something like that. So 
in a way it's quite a useful device because you've got basically a spectrum analyzer um, that will go from 40 odd megahertz up to uh, 800 and something megahertz of course it's all calibrated in uh, DB microvolts which is not so useful if you were going to use it as a spectrum analyzer which I probably wouldn't want to do anyway having a decent spectrum analyzer anyway what do I do with it now um, I really need to fix these buttons if I can get them on camera the attenuator buttons are absolutely awful the this 20 dB one works fine um, this one doesn't that should lock in and it doesn't do does bugger all 10 dB uh, sometimes it locks in but hardly ever the other ones don't seem too bad on the uh, option uh, menu we've got satellite selection digital and analog and when you switch it back as it was it was in digital and now it's back to analog you see you get a fuzzy picture because there's no signal and then well it never will be now on analog so but of course on digital it just doesn't do anything because it hasn't got a decoder which is a shame anyway UHF works, VHF works uh, span maximum or um, selectable span that works monitor spectrum analyzer works LNC band on the e satellite that's for satellite LLC band whatever the hell that means um, and where's the on off button on off button's a bit dodgy sometimes it's working now but yeah, I see one turn off now so that's a bit dodgy that button and you press it again it will turn off apart from that um, let's have another look at it from above see how hard it is to get in there see I need to get to all them all the front panel switches and they're right down hidden at the bottom of the board and in order to get to those I think I'm going to have to take just about every plug and socket off this board um, every plug and socket to get the bottom of get the board out of the bottom and then get access because I don't think the front panel comes off no it doesn't it's so all in one piece of uh, steel so you can't get to the buttons that way you've got to do undo just about every bloody plug and socket including the uh, high voltage connection which always terrifies me for the uh, CRT because they can hold a quite a bit of a charge even when they've been turned off for some time but I think I'd better just plod along steadily and try and dismantle it but I don't know what I'll be able to do with them uh, switches I can possibly switch squirt switch 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 cleaner in them but that may not help if it's a mechanical problem with the switches failing they may just be worn out completely after being pushed many many hundreds of times but anyway all I can do as I said is pull it all apart so that's what I'm going to do now so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get all the knobs off and um, they are almost impossible some of them <coughs> I nearly ruined and if you can see that it's uh, like a little uh, collet knob I nearly ruined my pliers trying to get that to un unfreeze itself and um, it's just basic corrosion they're all rusted solid 
Um, I couldn't even get out the bloody Allen key in the uh, holes because it was r so badly rusted. I had to try and hammer the Allen key in. But I've got two knob. Well, they normally have tops on them like this. But anyway, you're down to the brass inserts. They're solid, rusted on. So what I've done is I've squirted WD-40 in there. And I don't think there's much more I can do. Because if I can get this, you know, I have to just um, leave it now for that WD-40 to maybe do something. But unless I can get that, um, get those two knobs off, then I can't get this panel out and that means I can't get the bottom board out. Uh, the rest of it will be easy after I got those two knobs off. As I said, I'm just going to have to leave it alone now. Give it, um, don't know, I'll come back in an hour or two see how things are going. Anyway. Okay, um, I'm still waiting for the uh, WD-40 to do something. And I've noticed the display does jump around quite a lot. I thought I'd like to see what it's like on frequency accuracy. So I've got my Marconi generator set up for 650 MHz with 0 dBm output. I'm going to plug it in here. Oh yes, it's already seeing the signal. So now tuned to 650 and I presume the signal which is there but it is in theory supposed to appear in the centre of the screen uh, horizontally that is or vertically, whatever, I don't know anyway, um, so I'm just going to turn the level down and see how it manages with a lower level I think it's also picking up some TV signals as well which are the local multiplexes around that frequency anyway, I'm going to and the level down on that. Oh no, that was into modulation. I can see it going away now. Overloading the input I was. So that's that's minus 56 dBm. What the hell that is in dB microvolts, I haven't a clue. But we go right down. Uh, that's minus 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 80 minus 80 dBm we've still got um, a signal um, it's supposed to show you the minimum signal that you need to get a good signal to noise ratio but not quite sure how it does that at the moment um, I did that Maximum span, yeah. That'll be the signal down there. I'll put it on back onto normal span. Uh, anyway, why well, it's working anyway? Working. At, don't like that display um, jumping around too much, but maybe that's normal because it's not exactly a synthesized thing, is it? It's only a free-running uh, oscillator. That display is almost unreadable in places because of the damage to the uh, plastic front. It would be nice to get that plastic off and clean it, but whether I'll ever manage to get that far, I don't know. Anyway, I could try a different frequency. I could try, what should I try? 450? Right, that's 450, Meg. So if I tune down. There it is, more or less in the centre of the screen. Obviously you can do the calibration uh, uh, thing on this uh, procedure, but I think that would be reasonable anyway, as it is. Um, could try the VHF bands, uh, VHF low. It's on 46 at the moment, so stick a 50 mag signal in there. Hmm. 
Nothing. It's a bit strange. That's a bit strange. Maybe it's not sensitive enough for that frequency. RF. Right, zero dBm. It likes zero dBm, and that is mm, almost perfectly on 50. So, I wonder if it's just not very sensitive then on that frequency. That's minus 56, which I would have thought was probably a good signal, but obviously not. Okay, well that's, um, it's not a band I'd use it on anyway if I was doing TV things, because there's no TV on VHF. So what else could I try? VHF high. It's on 180. Let's stick it on 180 then. 180 it is. 180 it is. And RF level turning down. That's about minus 80 again. So it seems a bit more sensitive on the higher frequencies. Which is fine, as I said. It's useless to me on VHF really. I suppose you could look at FM signals. If I stuck a a whip aerial on it, it might pick up some FM signals. Um, that's about uh, I don't know, 18 foot, 18 inch whip. So if I tune, oh, you can't do that high. You've got to do it on low. Got to do it on there. Okay, yeah, we're getting some signals. Now be the FM band coming through. 106. Uh, well, now that's, that's up at the aircraft now. Yeah, it's working quite well. Obviously, it can't see the weaker signals, but that's not a problem. It's only a crap aerial anyway. You wouldn't expect you to see a lot on that aerial. On my spectrum analyzer, it wouldn't have any problem seeing uh, FM signals on that whip. But this isn't a, spe a proper sensitive spectrum analyzer, is it? is it? So you get what you pay for. And um, I'm hoping those buttons, attenuated buttons, aren't attenuating without me knowing about it. But I don't think they are. Otherwise you probably wouldn't see a lot at all. Anyway, that seems to work. Um, so it's just a matter of waiting now to see if I can get them knobs off if there's on the WD-40 done some good maybe. I'm not very optimistic. Um, I mean I could get medieval on its arse but that might be the end of it if I did that. So I'd have to go and wait in for the WD-40. I might leave it 24 hours now. Okay I've just realised something about this uh, thing. Um, and sorry about the band that goes up and down the uh, up and down the screen, it's not really doing that, it's just the way the camera is interacting with its shutter rate and all that rubbish. But and what I'm doing now, I'm back on 650 megahertz and I'm putting in minus 80 dBm and I've got it switched to the analog position. <coughs> Sorry. Now if you can see down there, there's a little marker and that gives you the minimum signal that you need for a decent analog picture. So if I turn the signal generator down, no, and on the uh, RF, that's it. If I drop that right down, it's telling me minus 89s. DBM's a good enough signal. Well, I think that'd be pretty marginal, actually, minus 89. But anyway, if I switch to digital, then you, this all comes up, and you've got your signal superimposed. And that's now showing me that you need this much signal, which is at, um, yeah, 35 dB microvolts to, to get a good picture. So, interesting, all the same. Back to the waiting for the WD-40. Right, well I did get it out, the circuit board out in the end. Did get the knobs off. Um, a WD-40 seemed to loosen them up quite nicely. Now ideally I'd like to get new knobs, but 
you know, these are probably three millimeter, I think, maybe a bit more diameter shafts. And finding knobs to fit that would be really hard to do, I think. So I'm just gonna use the old ones, I guess. And see how dirty it, that whole circuit board is on the front. That's really not good at all. But anyway, um, so what I'm going to do is, I hope, is this is the main problem, is this on-off on off switch. I think I can probably remove that from the circuit board and take it apart and see if I can make that work properly. The other ones on this particular part of the board, they, they're, fairly, they're fairly good. <clears throat> I might square some switch cleaner in there. And the attenuator switches um, I might take this cover off and um, have a look inside there and see if I can uh, fix those but I'm not too bothered about the attenuator because it's not something you would normally use um, most, unless you've got really strong TV signals so that's not a priority to do that anyway um, I've got the uh, front panel in front of me and I've given it a bit of a clean up because it was pretty awful, pretty dirty and um, looks fairly good now and I actually managed to straighten out the BNC's as well by um, getting a bit medieval on its ass. I had to punch the metalwork behind the BNC's to get it straightened out but that worked okay and they're fairly straight now the only other thing is this um, plastic bit that goes over the CRT. It's really, really scratched. Don't know what the hell they were doing with it, but it's. I think it's beyond uh, any chance of getting it back to um, being smooth again. I mean, I could try sanding it down, but it's just going to make it even worse. And it's not worth the effort, I think, for the, something like this. I've been thinking about the. Uh, rechargeable battery and uh, I can get a new lead acid 12 volt 2.6 amp hour for about 11 quid but I don't really want to spend the money on it to be honest it's not something I'm going to use very often probably anyway I could also get a lithium ion battery that would go in it uh, complete with charger for about the same price and that would be probably a better option but anyway, I'm going to see what I can do now about getting this switch out. So I'll try and get on with that. So this is the uh, power switch, which I've got out fairly easily off the board. But um, it's got this plastic um, piece on the top, and that really has to be removed to get inside the actual switch. Now I don't want to force this because it's probably going to crack if I put too much on it. And I may not even get it up, off at all. I might not just not bother with this at all. Um, I don't really think this is going to work very well at all. So what I think I might do is uh, I think you can just about get access through there. So I can squirt some switch cleaner in there and that may help the operation of the switch. As you remember it was not turning off sometimes. So if I squirt some switch cleaner in there and that may help, it may not but um, we shall see so I think I just sold it back on the board and then maybe have a look at those attenuator switches because the other ones are fine so I'll just go ahead and solder this back in I think right so I've taken this little metal cover off that was above the uh, attenuator switch 
And the reason they've got all that on there is for RF screening, obviously. And having looked underneath, well, I think this is going to be an impossible job to remove uh, any of these switches. I'm not even convinced that they are supposed to lock in place. Because this one on the end has got a really positive action and it works perfectly. But these on other two, maybe they're just meant to be momentarily selected. But if you look on the other side of the uh, circuit board, it's all covered up with a metal cam which is soldered all the way around and there ain't no way I'm going to attempt to remove that. It's not worth the hassle and uh, I'm not bothered about the attenuator, it's very seldom you'll need to use that. So what else can I say about this board? This board has really suffered with damp. If I look down here, there's a... where's it gone? Transistor there. And it is quite green on that pin there. So this has been stored somewhere very damp I'd say. But it uh, still works so I'm not too worried about that. And that's probably the worst corrosion on the board. So what do I do now? I suppose I've got to put it all back together again. Yeah, that's what I've got to do. Right, so I think I'll detest this thing before putting it back in its box. Um, I've got to turn the power supply on. I'm running it on 12 volts. Right, power supply's turned on. And um, power switch. And it's drawing 1.8 amps. And it does work by the looks of it. And the problem before was the uh, power switch wasn't going off all the time. So it is at the moment. So I reckon I fixed it by squirting all that switch cleaner in it. So anyway, I'm going to put it all back together now. Right, well I finally got this thing back together and it still works. First time I put it back together, I'd obviously bent the uh, front panel when I was straightening out the BNC's because all the buttons were sticking well the digital button was and these buttons along here were so I had to take the whole bloody thing apart again and um, bend the uh, chassis back into the so it was more or less straight and now they don't stick at all and um, interesting thing I noticed about this it's got a speaker on it you turn that up you get a hideous noise but um, that noise is useful because it corresponds to the um, signal strength if I turn the generator up and down as you can hear the tone changes now that's obviously so you can be turning an aerial around and not have to keep looking at the screen so that's quite clever also you I've noticed this thing down the bottom that comes up and down if I turn the ge generator up now that's giving me an indication of the um, carrier to noise ratio so um, if the signals really low then it'll go right down so that's basically that's at minus 73 dBm so that's indicating your carry to noise ratio is poor now if I switch to digital mode the um, if I tune it in a bit it seems to um, require less of a signal to get a decent carrier to noise ratio which I think is what they uh, mean by digital signals being needing less sig signal strength than analog ones that's why all the uh, high power transmitters in this country are now broadcasting at a lot lower power because in theory you need less signal for a digital s transmission so 
think that's about it really. I'm not terribly happy with the uh, the display. It does seem to move around a bit. The digital readout. I'm not sure if that's um, a fault or not, but I'm not too worried because I've just about had enough of this thing now. I've had it to pieces so many times. And the other thing is um, I managed to locate some knobs on eBay. The, the actual spindles or whatever you call it are four millimeter diameter and I managed to find some on eBay that are, I got 10 for five pounds so that's pretty good. They may be slightly bigger than these, that's the only problem. They're 16 millimeter diameter but um, it should be okay. And I think the only thing else to do with this thing is to actually connect it up to um, a TV aerial and we can look at some of the uh, TV signals that it's seeing on the screen. So I have to take it in the house to do that and I'll be a handheld probably when I'm doing it so I'll go and do that. Right, I've now got it connected up to a TV aerial and you can see all the uh, digital multiplexes. Um, this will be the uh, low end of the band around four, uh, 500 and something megahertz and this will be the top end of the band and it's on um, full span at the moment so it's displaying the whole UHF band and up the top there that is almost certainly um, probably 4G mobile phone signals so if I switch it back from full span to um, um, selectable span if you want to call it there's some of the uh, that's on 530 and you can see the several of the uh, multiplexes if I change the span a bit um, right so that's a multiplex there and that's another one there and there's some more if I tune through that's about 500 megahertz in the center and there's another one on 4, 480 and also another one there and we'll get some pulses as well there's a strange little signal there on 460 don't know what that is anyway if I tune it right up here past all these I've got um, yeah there's some even stronger ones change the span a bit there's a few more multiplexes and they're a lot stronger than the ones I showed you just now because I've actually got two TV aerials on my roof uh, on two different transmitters um, because we've got a local transmitter five miles away but that only gives you a f not the full range of programs you can get off the uh, main transmitters, the main high power transmitters and that one's, the local transmitter is only 100 watts I think so that's why I've got two TV aerials up and if I go up further up the band yeah there's some stuff there that's at 800 megahertz and that I would guess is mobile phone transmissions so there we are really and um, I'll go back to one of these and uh, it's, in, it's actually in analog mode at the moment if I switch to digital it's showing me the carry to noise ratio which according to this is 35 dB which I guess is pretty good I don't know it's a pretty strong signal I know that so um, what is that reading? that's reading 65 DB microvolts, whatever that means. I've still got this hideous band going up and down the screen, I see, which is really annoying. It did go away earlier, that band. Um, but anyway, it's uh, basically working and doing what it should do. I don't think there's much else to say about it. I've cleaned it up as best I can. 
the dirt on the case is ingrained so I've given up on that and I don't know whether I'll buy a battery for it, it's going to cost me 11 quid for a, a lithium ion battery complete with charger which I could easily fit in the space that the old lead acid was in but I don't really want to spend money on this thing, I might do, I'm not sure yet so that's about the end of it I think, end of the video I didn't have to do too much really in the end apart from get the frequency uh, uh, digital readout working which was just bad contacts due to all the uh, corrosion apart from that there wasn't much else to do straightening out the BNC's on the front so that's it then and bye for now